This week we have a very special one which probably would be Jerry Anderson's most popular show. We're looking at my favourite comics, which are TV21 comics, um, where all of the uh, stories were headlines, like they were real news, um, standby for action, and it was like Thunderbird 3 missing. They weren't like your standard comic book. We've mentioned this before because they did a lot of the Jerry Anderson stuff and some Doctor Who as well. Um, but they treated, it was like a newspaper-sized comic, and they treated kids like they were getting a comic book. And the ingenious thing is the date on them were 100 years in the future. So yeah. it was like you were getting, um, I guess, this really colourful, amazing newspaper from the future with all your favourite um, TV shows in different adventures. But they treated it very real. And you can see from the art down the bottom there, it's a little bit small. It's not like your standard Marvel and DC comic, which is very sort of, action hero and exaggerated it's a more you know painterly artwork than you got in the american comics and i think that makes these comics absolutely classic and these are very coveted by collectors because they were sort of newsprint size they're very hard to get in good condition because everyone folded them in half so instantly 90 um, percent of them were sort of not mint even when they were first bought tv21 launched with stingray as its head um comic um, Thunderbirds was not the, the front page as much as some of the other shows, but it was definitely the lasting um, uh, the lasting comic that stayed with TV21 all the way through its different iterations. So TV21 started out as TV Century 21 comics, and then it went to uh, Captain Scarlet and TV21, and then mm. it eventually went into Countdown and other things. Um, but Thunderbirds was one of those that was all the way through. Thunderbirds only ran for a couple of years, but yeah. the comics and the annuals and stuff like that went way into the 70s because of its popularity. Um, I think merchandisers knew that Jerry Anderson produced a quality product that struck a chord with kids. So right mm -hmm. from the very start, there was a lot of merchandise for Thunderbirds. And so these are the Amada paperbacks. And Amada used to get um, licensed for different TV shows. So they did a lot of the um, Jerry Anderson stuff. And they also did Doctor Who and some, some other ones. They're great because I love the artwork on them. Um, they're sort of that really evocative stuff from the era. Half of them are artwork, half of them are stills from the show. Um, and you can imagine if you're a kid and you can't get videos because it's pre-videos and you can't get anything else, having the books that have such amazing artwork and are so colourful and photos from the show are just fantastic. Uh, so we all know that Jerry Anderson was heavily involved with it. You always wonder, what was the deal with Sylvia Anderson? How did she get into the show? Well, as it turns out, I mean, if you ever wanted to see what roughly what she looked like and definitely what she sounded like, you had to go for Lady Penelope because it was modelled on her. So <laughs> there you go. Now, this is this is what I found interesting while researching this. I do remember the Lady Penelope books and um, annuals and records. I did not know that Lady Penelope was as big as she was because of Thunderbirds. Mm. Um and you can see the evolution there where you the original um, puppet look of a Lady Penelope is on the first couple of books and annuals, but she spread beyond that to where you see that Penelope one down the bottom and it doesn't look like a, a marionette anymore at all. And it sort of broke into the mainstream where she got her own fans through this who were the little girls mm. who grew up with it. And she had a life beyond the show where the Lady Penelope annual changed into the Penelope annual and it had the Thunderbirds in it for a couple of years. And then it just went to a full on adventure annual with the, for girls. So Jerry Anderson was quite groundbreaking at that. And I guess um, Sylvia Anderson can be applauded for that as well, for the characterization she did with Lady Penelope, which is one of the classic um, British characters ever. And so um, here are some of the earlier Thunderbirds annuals and you can see they went right into the 70s and you had combined Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet annuals, which is a theme that we'll see probably more when we look at Captain Scarlet, how the two shows were sort of tag team together a lot. And you can see down the bottom there as well, the Thunderbirds annuals went into the 70s and the Lady Penelope annuals went into the mm. 70s. And on that last one there with the, the little girl with the rabbit, there's very little to do with Thunderbirds at all on that cover apart from the name Penelope. Um, yeah. So I, I thought that was unusual that it had a life outside of Thunderbirds, which was so so big and so popular. You'd almost think this is a different character because the hair colour is different too. So uh, yeah. yeah, and as you can see, um, what I was saying about it came back and there were revivals. Well, it came back in the uh, early '90s, and the annuals came back, and all the merchandising came back. So it just shows you the power of 
repeats, but more importantly, probably having not that, that at that stage, not having them where you could download them and see them on YouTube. So it caught a total new audience, probably with um, kids who had grown up with it, wanted to share it with their children and their children loved it as well. But it happened twice because you can see there's a couple of annuals from the 90s and then they started uh, re-screening it in 2000 and they got another six years of annuals out of it. So it what is one of those shows that really surprises me how many times it's had revivals and how loved it is by different generations. This is one of the things that surprises me as well. Thunderbirds was massively, massively popular as um, records and music would go, probably from... Um, British shows, it is probably the most popular show that wasn't a musical that has gone on to spin out so many records and versions of the themes and, and stories. Um, Cliff Richards was even in it. Mm. And you can see um, Cliff Richards, they called him Cliff Richards Jr., was was built. And the entire band, The Shadows, were built as marionettes. And they performed um, songs on one of the Thunderbirds movies. Um Thunderbirds go and it was a, another song they did in Thunderbird 6, which is just crazy um, to think that it was that popular that you would attract the stars. But I did not realise how many vinyl their releases uh, releases there were for the Thunderbird series. So we've discussed it before because they came out with different um, different uh, shows from and different themes. But TV uh, Century 21, which was the comics, was really the spearhead of a multimedia um, kind of organisation that really did a lot of different things across different media. So they one, one of the things that surprised me was how many records they made on this label. And you can see there you've got the TV21 themes, which we've looked at before, which has Doctor Who and Stingray and all of that. But with Thunderbirds, um, they had many, many stories um, and you could pick your favourite Thunderbird. So you can see there's Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 2, Thunderbird 3, and they all have different adventures with the different characters highlighted on each album. And a lot of them were actually new stories narrated for the records. So some sometimes when they did stuff like this, they would cut down a real existing episode. But other times they would actually get the original cast and get original um, score and make up new stories. With a lot of the other shows, there were one or two albums. Thunderbirds had um, dozens of them. And you can imagine when you got the comics, you can see the adverts um, on each one of these pages. I put the adverts. So if you were into pop, you'd probably get, you know, your countdowns and stuff like that, and it would show you the new pop releases for the week. TV21, uh, their own comic, was then advertising the different new release on the TV21 label. So each week you could see if anything new was coming out, you sort of every six months there'd be six new albums that you could add to. So before VHS or being able to record stuff, I guess some kids would record it with reel-to-reel -reel tapes, um, yep. you would be able to get these. They had fantastic colourful covers which were to do with what was... Um, the story on them and you could take these home and build a collection and this is I guess like collecting videos or DVDs before they existed but I think it's quite a genius way of advertising where if you've got the voice artists there and you've got all the special effects all you need to do is press these and put them out and you've got the newspaper that's advertising them yourself so it probably was quite lucrative for them. So there you go. And this is, um, again, what I was saying about the whole, the whole um, other side of it where it was really strange that um, the female character got pushed so hard, but she was very, very popular. And she had just as many singles and music releases as the Thunderbirds did. And they were just as popular. So they had full page ads. They had their own stories. It was usually her and Parker out on their own adventures mm -hmm. helping the Thunderbirds. But she was the main character. And, and what I've said a couple of times before, it was really unusual at the time for a female almost to be yep. the James Bond and not the sidekick uh, for a, a series like this. Now, we've looked at these before. These are one of my favourite items. Um, we've looked at the different Give a Show projectors, and this is the Thunderbirds Give a Show projector, and it is as uh, as as beautiful as all the others. It has that very colourful um, 60s box artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, Chad Valley, who did the Give a Show projectors, obviously had their in-house artists who did this because it's not like the other Thunderbirds merchandise. It is sort of fits with the Chad Valley Give a Show projectors. Uh, the Thunderbirds one has all the Thunderbirds. It has different slides with different stories. Each slide kind of concentrates on six different or seven different um, 
little pictures that tell a, a comic story on the different characters and the different Thunderbirds. Not only was Thunderbirds in their own give a show projector, but it was popular enough that when they did sort of greatest hits and best of and, you know, mm extra stories um it was it was mixed in with the other one so you can see there's one on the bottom there that has stingray and popeye and daleks yeah. and thunderbirds all together which is which is quite cool because they're all on different channels and all from all over the world but they they all came together as sort of um a family on the chad valley give a show projectors yeah and this is where i started going through stuff and going wow there is just so much here we're not going to be able to do this on one episode because Thunderbirds had board games in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and new ones still coming out in the in the this this century. Um, and again, with a lot of the board games we've looked at, it's often we will get a themed version of Snakes and Ladders or a themed version of another game. The Thunderbirds games are really interesting in that they took the international rescue um, story and they ran with it and made totally different games. So you would often get the entire globe is the board and then you would pick missions and the missions were in different areas of the world and then you would pick the um, the Thunderbirds and the crew that you had to do them. And what is really nice, most of the games were about competing to help people and things like that. Yeah. And really unusual for board games, a couple of the Thunderbirds games were one-player games as well. So if you didn't have any friends, they could have got the Thunderbirds game and they could have um, played it by themselves. And these are some of the more modern games. And I think what is fantastic, um, the artwork as it becomes updated goes through different eras. Um, so you can see the 60s ones have very 60s artwork. And then you get to the 80s and the 90s and you can see the artwork changes in that it, it's sort of more, more realistic and more true to life. And then you've got more, I think, more dynamic and more colourful artwork as well. You can see the games have more mission cards and mm. more complicated and what I really thought, I haven't played the game, but I was looking into it. Like this TV show, you could get Thunderbird 2 and then you can load different things into it with what you think may help you on your mission. So um, if you are a Thunderbird fan, I think you're really well served with the amount of games and the variety and the quality of them that are out there. So these are some of the puzzles. And it is interesting that um, these are very hard to get. Um, as you can see, I found most of the ones that were available um, and like a lot of the puzzles from the 60s that were aimed for kids, they turned up mashed and very disposable. So it's very hard to get these with a good box um, that hasn't been crushed at the sides. Yep. You know why it's worth getting them? Because as we know, the Thunderbirds, especially Jigsaw puzzles, they're all about world peace. Get it? <laughs> yes, I get it. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, there's some... Again, some older puzzles, the ones on the top right there, which are the different members of the Tracy family, which which I was saying, you know, they played into where you'd have your favourite and they made the merchandise of it. So even if you only liked one, there was one for you to grab. Then there's some more modern puzzles there. And boy, the artwork gets really good. The one at the, the top left there, I could almost see that on a Thunderbirds um carry case for your action figures, which they did figures by Matchbox that size. So there's my concept for a new Thunderbirds item. So Thunderbirds are go would sometimes turn up at the Valhalla. I, I never saw it, but I, I always meant to. Um, I think the artwork for it is absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's very, very, very nice artwork, especially that main poster at the top yep. there, which has got just about everything you could ever want. And again, which I think is really cool, where most movie posters would have the actors starring in it, they have got all the characters almost like actors along the bottom, but they're just the um, marionettes, which I think is a very cool concept. And even the catchphrase, excitement is go, adventure is go, danger is go, Thunderbirds is go, that is quite a good catchphrase for a movie poster. Um, there's also a couple of original lobby cards there, which are really, really super hard. What I found with these... The Thunderbirds movie posters, you can't even find them for sale. They are very, very rare items. Now, we've talked about this before with the puppets, and Pelham Puppets also did some of the Thunderbirds ones, but there were a couple of different um, companies that did Thunderbirds, and I guess because Thunderbirds has run for so long, you do get the licence go from place to place. Some of them look damn creepy, and some of them look very good um, compared to what you get on the screen. Now, these are mainly um, vintage ones from the 60s. So even in the 60s, there were a lot of different versions. Um, you can see they did Lady Penelope. They did all the Thunderbirds. They did Parker. Um, 
So they did quite a range. They've got brains there as well. So they did quite a range of the puppets. And then Lady Penelope also at the top there got her own line of fashion dolls with Tintin, which I didn't know about. Um, now we're going back back to the 60s to begin with because I had a, a Thunderbirds collectible card um, slide. And it's, now there were a couple of different 60s com, um, Thunderbirds sets. There's the black and white one and there's some colour cards as well. What I found really interesting... They're very hard to find, but there's a set of Thunderbirds chocolate bars. Um, and until I was researching for this episode, um, I had never seen them before. They turned up on a um, on a um, Instagram account, which I thought was very cool uh, to someone still to have them. Because we did a lot of the 60s stuff last week, we're looking still at the 60s, but also on the modern stuff and some of the modern stuff to begin with based on the 60s show, because there are different versions of it now. Um, and I do remember when this set came out in Minotaur, I saw it for the first time and I collected it myself, the ones with the orange packets on the left. And I was absolutely thrilled because there was no... Thunderbirds merchandise for years and years and years. But in the early 90s, we were talking last week, they showed Thunderbirds again on um, BBC Two. So it went across to the BBC and it was a massive smash hit. And there were more toys and cards and books and everything um, came out again. So the last slide was the 60s card and these are uh, cards and these are some of the 90s and more mm. modern cards. And, yep, so Tiki Toys... Um, well, one of the most popular British toy companies. They go back um, 100 years and they produce toys, um, not just TV and movie-related stuff. They've produced just about every car you could imagine and mm. they've, they've still released stuff. And one of their big mainstays, though, when you release cars, you often release something for a season and for a year because that's when it's available. But Thunderbirds and Jerry Anderson stuff, some of these things were available from the same moulds in different versions for 20 years because they were that popular and um, they were that much loved by kids to the point where, you know, they crossed a generation and people who grew up with them were then buying them for their kids. What can be harder than finding the toys is some of the paperwork associated with the toys. Mm. So before we look at the toys, here are some of the vintage catalogues from the day which highlight some of the amazing Jerry Anderson items and we haven't looked at Captain Scarlet and some of those other ones yet but we will be looking at that in the future. So the original Thunderbird, Thunderbird 2 is probably one of the greatest toys um, ever produced, the original Dinky toy. Um, uh, when we do these things and look at different toy lines, often I say there's an exceptional toy. With Thunderbirds, there were quite a few exceptional toys, which I, I would say if you were a toy historian, you would have to put it sort of in your top 500 or your top 100 um, best toys ever. And this is such a good toy because it's a spaceship. It's a futuristic design. It still looks futuristic, even though it was designed in the 60s. You could imagine something like that being built today. It was part of an iconic show. As we said, there was something for everyone in Thunderbirds because all the ships were different colours. All the ships looked totally different. So whatever you were in into, Thunderbirds provided something that you could identify with. This was the original um, release of Thunderbird 2, and it's the classic green one with um, the red engines and stuff. And you can see just on the um, on the right there, you've got another version which still looks green, but it's more on a metallic um, bluey green than the classic green from the show. Now, when Thunderbirds was originally shown, most people um, didn't see it in colour because... Yeah. It was in the mid-60s when no one had colour TVs and it was primarily filmed in colour because they wanted to sell it to America and it kind of future-proofed it a bit as well mm. um, because these days you don't see much black and white um, on TV but Thunderbirds being colour is still something that gets repeated on Channel 9. So they did make different versions of Thunderbird 2 where you've got a blue version of Thunderbird 2 and it's actually easier to get the blue version of Thunderbird 2 than the green version as a dinky toy. So the other one that, um, again, dinky toys produced and was part of their staple for years and years and years is Lady Penelope's uh, Fab One. This is interesting because um, even though this was incredibly popular and sold a squillion, this is much, much harder to get than um, Thunderbird 2. And I do wonder if that's mm. because a rocket from Thunderbirds is more likely to be collected by boys and yeah. um, held on to. So even though um, I think 
Thunderbird was quite revolutionary on having a character that girls could identify with and she was a strong character and had unique gadgets and um, an amazing car. I don't think um, a lot of boys would have got it just because it was pink. We did see in Japan you could get kits and there were blue versions of it, so mm. obviously they'd done the market research there and decided give an option, a, a pink one for girls and a blue one for boys. And the same thing, I think, when you were watching it in black and white, you wouldn't have known it was a pink Rolls Royce, yeah. so didn't really matter too much at the time either. So these are original 60s toys as well, and these are absolutely beautiful items. Um, these are very, very hard to get boxed, and if you do find them even out of box, they're very, very hard to get um, without any damage because they were very brittle plastic, uh, so these are a lot harder to find. Here we've got um, some of the model kits. These are Japanese kits. Um, the thing I love about the Japanese stuff is it, it usually has different artwork from the UK stuff. It's always stunning. It always looks absolutely amazing. Um, very dynamic pictures, very collectible because, I mean, when you get a model kit, you put it together, which means usually the box is gone or the box is damaged or you don't get a complete kit. And you can see um, you've got Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 2, Thunderbird 3, uh, 4, which you, you get with 3. You've got the Mole, and then you get the Space Station, which is uh, number 5 as well. Then you could get, actually, um, Thunderbird 1 and Thunderbird 3 in their sort of launch pads and docking bays. It's really cool to do a ship, but when they actually make the playset and diorama that you can put yeah. it in, that's a whole extra level for model makers and you can enjoy customising it and painting it and putting up a display that has a background. So that's fantastic. And I found that picture of um, Thunderbird 5 there. Now, out of all the Thunderbird toys, Thunderbird 5 is the one that is the least produced and seems to be the hardest to find and thus collectibles, uh, collectors are always ringing stores going, you know, have you got Thunderbird 5? And Michael's right there. These kits, like a lot of kits from the 60s that people grew up with, they get um, re-released quite a bit. So the original ones, of course, still hold their value for collectors. Mm. And there is always that sort of argument, what is worth more, a mint in boxed unused one or someone who's painted it studio accurate so you've got an absolutely amazing kit because both go for huge prices to different collectors. So because you can still get these ones, they're quite a nice collectible toy and usually they reissue the same artwork as they originally came out with in the 60s. So... Um, we've talked about how um, it was kind of revolutionary that they repeated the Thunderbirds um, in the 90s and that caused another wave of Thunderbird mania. And the Net Matchbox stuff is pretty amazing. Again, they are an amazing um, set of toys and an amazing toy line that came out in the 90s but really capture the original 60s look and feel of the Thunderbirds. And if the um, Tinky Toy Thunderbird was a good toy, the Matchbox Thunderbird was equally as good. This is um, some of the Matchbox releases and Again, one of the best um, toy sets you're ever going to get is that Matchbox uh, collector's set that has all of the Thunderbirds and Fab One die cast in a, in a presentation box. And there's two versions of it. There's the original one that was released on the top left there. And then there's the same thing produced in a Radio Times. I think it was the 50th or 40th anniversary, which was basically the same thing promoted again through Radio Times. They are absolutely fantastic toys. And the great thing about them is they're good enough that if you're an adult collector, you can sit them on the shelf and you go, they're really good representations of the Thunderbirds. And if you're a kid, they've got enough, you know, moving parts on Thunderbird 1 and then you've got the um, the pod in the middle of Thunderbird 2 that comes down and, and Thunderbird 4 comes out and then you've got the Thunderbird 3. There was also, I have never seen one, I've only seen them online, a gold-plated edition of um, the Matchbox set as well, which I would uh, probably think is quite rare. I couldn't find much information or sold items on eBay. The amazing thing that happened with Thunderbirds, it was popular in the 90s and then 10 years later they repeated it again and the whole thing happened again. Um, and it came out, I think this is about 2000, 2001. Uh, Carlton, not um, Matchbox, reissued the Thunderbirds toys. They did the Talking Dolls. They did another set of the um, of the ships. I don't think the small ships are as good because they're more plastically. They, they do talk, though, um, which is a nice uh, feature. And they did 
Tracy Island again and again it sold out and again it was impossible to find and they did a few different versions so when it originally came out it was a Tracy Island and you had to buy all the vehicles separately and then the following year they reissued again and they reissued it with all the vehicles which I think is probably more of a nice touch for kids it might cost more but to get the whole set in one go is pretty awesome but then they also did large scale versions of Thunderbird 1, 2 and 3 which are classic ships, they sort of hark back to the larger versions from the 60s, and they are all fantastic toys as well. And whenever you see them, um, we get them in the shop from time to time, they go really fast. So yeah, we're gonna look at um, Tracy Island. Um, and, and again, it is um, one of those toys, mm. this is the Matchbox one, when it originally came out, um, was fantastic. Collectors were looking for it, even though it was released for kids. Um, Kids couldn't get it because collectors obviously went in and cleared the shelves out. It was originally released mm. at £30, which was an expensive toy at the time, but is actually quite good value for what you get. The Thunderbirds Tracy Island, I think, is a fantastic and iconic toy because it captures really well all of the elements within the TV show that kids remember. If you ask someone who hasn't watched Thunderbirds for, you know, 30 years what they remember, they remember the Thunderbird countdown and the Thunderbirds taking off. And most particularly, they remember the palm trees flipping over. And for them to be able to replicate that so well in a toy, um, it's better than some toys that come out today. People remember Thunderbird coming out from under the swimming pool. So they have, of course, done the thing where the Thunderbird comes out from under the swimming pool. And the other thing is Thunderbird 3 launching through the donut, um, which was the offices. And I always thought that must be so well reinforced because a rocket going through the middle of that every couple of days, you'd probably just shake it to bits. The other thing that's impressive, it is a big toy. You get your value for money. It isn't a rinky-dinky little thing. Um, on the back there, you can see it really well advertises all the different features that came from the um, that came with the toy. So each um, element of the toy adds playability to it. And then Matchbox were really smart because, of course, they didn't sell the figure the the ships with it. So you buy the island, and of course you have to buy the ships because the island is a good toy, but you need the ships to go with it. And you don't just need one of them; you need all of them.